Welcome. In this video we're going to take a look at how you can find out what users are doing on your network. My name is Darren Delaney from Netford. Well in today's world networks vary in size from a couple of users up to tens of thousands of users. Now if you're responsible for managing a network you know what it's like. Users come in, log on, access applications, move data around, go on the web, watch videos, uh, stream data, Lots and lots of things users can do over the course of their working day. But what happens when things go wrong? Maybe a rogue user can suddenly appear. They could be clicking on links, getting infected with ransomware, suddenly your file shares are getting encrypted. There may be network misuse where users are watching videos over WAN links, copying files around, saturating your remote connections, slowing the network down for everybody. Could also be you've got contractors coming in, maybe accessing sensitive information. Um, you need to get an audit trail of that. Or users are transferring data out of your network and you just need to understand what type of applications they're using on, in the cloud. So how can we find out what users are doing? Well, there are many options out there. We can look at things like firewall logs. That'll give us some indication as to what's happening at the edge of our network. Now firewalls aren't really designed to store long-term logs, but you can log on and you can see what's happening, what connections are being blocked and what are connections are allowed. Most network devices support SNMP, so you could set up SNMP monitoring, find out what ports are being utilized, mounted traffic flowing through. You could look at network protocol analysis, so free tools like Wireshark, you can go read deep and see inside packets or every Windows device, in fact most server operating systems, client operating systems will have some form of a log. So Windows event logs, for example, will have a tremendous amount of information. Problem is it's too much. To, you, you need to filter out what's useful and you know what's what's uh, just information type events. You could then enable things like Windows file and database auditing on your servers. You need to do that per share, per folder, per server. Or you could take a look at proxy logs. Now the list goes on, there are other logging options out there, but the problem with this is that your information about what's happening is spread all around your network, different servers, in different formats. So it's really hard to get a single view or a, you know, one view of, of all user activity. So now let's take a look at one of our own products called Langardian. I'm going to show you how it can give you a single system to log on to, to find out what users are doing on your network. Okay, I'm now logged on to my LangGuardian. So LangGuardian uses network traffic as a data source. So it uses deep packet inspection technologies to extract metadata from packets. So it's not storing every single packet, but it's storing certain information. So for example, file names or usernames or application names. But let's take a look at a couple of use cases. So in the first use case, I got a manager, I got somebody inquiring about a user, what they're doing. So we need a kind of a complete view of what a user did on a network over a specific time period. So to do that, we simply go to our search box and in the username, type in the name of the person in question or put in their username. And we could select the time period if it's a week or a month or maybe just an hour, whatever the requirement is, and search. So what do we know about this user? Well, over three quarters of the traffic rack data they move around this file share traffic, some Oracle, some HTTP. They are also running Dropbox, we can see here, so potentially here for data leakage, you might want to check out what files they're accessing. So actually let's do that. So to see what files, we simply click on the file share traffic and we can see there's some emails, there are PST files, so nothing too sinister there, just their mail archives. What else do we know? Well, we can see some websites the user's on, Windows Update, some also a sporting site here, if we drill down on that. We can actually see here that they're watching some football, live scores, looks like commentary, so possibly watching uh, some football match at the moment. And we can see the files here again. So if we need to get more detail about the file activity, you got it here, you got how many times they access the files, 
or if you need more information on their internet browsing, we can see it here again. We can drill down. You can see the URIs they're accessing for the Windows update. You can even see the patches that they're downloading. So for a single user, you just type in the username. You can see what applications they're using, how much data they're moving around, any security events, and detect things like if they're using Dropbox, for example. So another really great way to, to use this information is, let's say you wanted to shut down a server, you know, doing some data, uh, data center migration, and you need to find out what users are accessing a server. So rather than switching the server off and waiting to see who screams the loudest, let's be a bit more proactive and, sit and find out what users are accessing a server before we shut it down. So to do that, let's go back here to the home page, and in the search, just type in server. There are many reports that we can use to analyze server activity. So the one I'm looking for here is, um, let's go for top file servers by user. Now let's expand the filter here. And the server I need to investigate is 10.1.1.97. And let's run that. So now we can see a list of users that are accessing this file and what resource on this server that they're accessing. So we know we've got to contact uh, Laura and Robert here. Just tell them, you know, we're going to be switching the server off. We're going to be moving it. It won't be accessible for a few minutes. I mean, the primary user here is Laura. She must be using as some sort of virtual machine store. So it's really, it really boils down to a single user here because there's very little activity beyond what Laura is doing. So quick phone call here to Laura, just tell her we're doing some work on this server. Now another very common use case or really common use case is where data goes missing, sensitive data, and somebody wants to know who accessed it. So we need a list of usernames or who accessed the file or what happened to the file. So to do that, again, we use our search panel here. And instead of username, we're going to go for a file name. Now, we don't have the full file name, but we can put in as much as we know. So to something to do with company, some sort of company strategy document, put in company. Again, we have the option to select a time period. Let's run a search. So the file in question, just looking at them here, is this first one. So we need to know more about who accessed this company strategy file and what happened. So we simply click on the volume here and now we can see the fact that the file was deleted from the network on the 28th of the 1st, uh, 2317, quite late in the evening. Who's responsible for that? Well, it's Robert Schmidt. So now we've got the user, we've got the file and we've got the action and time. So we can get the restore from tape prior to that. We also need to talk to Robert about why he removed that file from the network at such a late hour on that particular date. So that's a really, really common use case when data goes missing, sensitive data, people need to know who accessed it, what happened. Simply just put in the file name or folder name, search, get the user, get the action, get the time and understand what happened. So a couple of more, I suppose more in the kind of security space, uh, a lot of issues at the moment with uh, dodgy attachments coming in, strange subject lines. So how can we track and trace that stuff? Well, to do is let's go to, instead of using search, let's go to the reporting menu. Let's go for email. And we can take a look at like emails with attachments. Run the report. And here we can see the um, source. We can have username as well, just like I showed you earlier on. You've got the from, the to, the subject line and the name of the attachment, in this case a zip file. So I could search for all instances where a zip file has been attached to an email. Really, really useful for um, doing forensics on phishing attacks, uh, find out where an email went, find out who received an email with a certain subject line. Very useful for that. And another example of something similar, but when it comes to database activity is let's take a look at SQL Server here and we could go for things like top SQL statement 
run the report. And here then you can see a list of all the most, most common SQL statements. You got the full statement there and your option to drill down. You can see the source. Again, we, just, we can get the username by clicking the button over here. You got the type of statement. In this case, it's a select statement. Uh, date and time is the query was run. So that's SQL activity. You can have things like, you know, what are the most um, active users when it comes to SQL? Um, amount of data somebody might be downloading off your SQL servers. So again, you got a really good audit trail there of what's happening on your database servers. Everything you've seen so far, we can generate alerts on. For example, if a file is deleted, you can be alerted. If ransomware is detected, you can be alerted. If traffic goes above a certain level, you can be alerted. So it's, you don't always have to be running reports. So that's a very quick introduction to how you can monitor what users are doing on your network. As I mentioned, our approach is to use network traffic analysis. And to set that up, you just need a span port or a mirror port. There's more information on our website if you click on the link on the video at the moment or just go to our website, netfor.com. You'll find a lot more information there and you can also download a free 30-day trial of the software. It's fully featured, so everything you saw here today is available in the trial. So try it out, take a look at your own network and you'll be amazed at the level of detail that a tool like Langardian can provide.